All right, so I've decided to forego a traditional review for Wolfenstein 2, despite me saying a few times that I plan to do it, because a couple things have happened here, and it's not that I'm, for those that are thinking I'm not doing a traditional review because I'm afraid to talk about negative aspects of the game, that is not true at all, and we're going to be talking about some of that in this video, but it's because I figured, you know what, this game came out last year at this point if you want to know what wolfenstein 2 is you'll already know and even for switch owners you don't need me to explain what wolfenstein is it is a sequel to wolf to another wolfenstein game and at this point uh if you want to know what wolfenstein is there are zillions of reviews out there both of the switch version which i don't think need to be there in terms of telling you what the game is and both of just like digital foundry's analysis of how switch compares to say xbox one x and stuff like that and then on top of that obviously reviews of the original game from last year. So I'm not going to do a traditional review for this game because it doesn't feel like it's a game that needs a traditional view like Mario Tennis Aces did, which is a brand new game. So I think it's actually something I'm going to hold myself to moving forward is when I plan to do reviews of games, it's going to be of brand new titles and then titles like Wolfenstein 2, I want to do something more akin to this, which is a conversation about my thoughts about this game after spending some actual time with it. Not not in a cramped space in you know at E3, not just in portable mode, but also in docked mode, and then talk about its greater impact on uh, what Switch is and what Switch can have in terms of games in the future. Because you guys remember, obviously, a recent popular rant video I did talked about how uh, Switch is not going to be getting full AAA support uh, for basically the lifetime of the system. And there's a copious amount of reasons from that. Some that are Nintendo's fault, some that are third party's fault, and some that are just uh, maybe even a technical impossibility. And it's very frustrating to me as someone who would like to have all these games on the go that that's the case. And I feel like Wolfenstein 2 is a good examination of... Uh, why that is because on the surface there's two ways I really look at Wolfenstein 2 in my experience with it and just just to get this out there right now Wolfenstein 2 is a very very good video game and I don't know why it didn't sell very well last year I don't know if it just released at a bad time or if its name doesn't have enough clout I don't know I really hope it, it, it sells well on, on Switch because it deserves uh, a lot more attention than it's gotten since it came out but that's neither here nor there what I want to talk about here is my feelings on this game and how it runs on Switch and what this means uh, for games in the future. Because the thing is, is as I said, there's two ways to look at this. One way is you could say this is the most impressive uh, Switch port there is of a current generation game. Mother, uh, Because I think about current gen games that have been ported. And I'm not talking about remasters because those obviously have uh, their own their own little things to take into consideration, like the L.A. Noir remaster, you know, might not be as impressive as the current remaster, but it's just an older game anyways, so I don't feel like that's a good comparison point. I, I feel like comparing this to Doom, and then comparing this to something like NBA 2K18, uh, we could talk about WWE 2K18 if you want, but I feel like that is just a mute point, because if there ever was an unplayable AAA game on Nintendo, it's WWE 2K18. But, uh, yeah, I, here's the thing. It's very impressive what this game does on Switch in terms of maintaining a vast majority of the visual elements that were present in uh, the original game. And I'm going to put a link down to uh, the Digital Foundry analysis that goes way more in depth on the differences between uh, the Switch version and, say, uh, the top-end console version, which is on Xbox One X. And you'll find that, you know, basically the differences are mostly resolution-based and uh, frame rate-based, and that there's a couple visual uh, tweaks especially with water and then adding a wall in in the city that that kind of makes rendering a little easier uh just some little visual tricks like that but for the most part uh the thing that's impressive about wolfenstein 2 and, and why even even digital foundry was very impressed is that this is the entire game in the visual style presentation that they intended. Full particle effects. Uh, they didn't get rid of shadows. They just reduced them. Uh, all the textures are there. They just reduced the quality of those textures, which is why uh, the game file probably shrunk 30 gigs. Is because when you go from 1080p and 4K level textures down to textures that look like they're already sub-HD textures, I, you know that really reduces file size a lot. Um, all of the visual elements are there. All the guns are there. None of the content has been cut. All the enemies are there. Uh, they even think the difficulty has even been tweaked, not necessarily to be easier, but to be more fluid and more understandable. So you can actually feel a difference in difficulty going from each difficulty setting on up. Uh, I have tested out every single difficulty setting. 
Um, needless to say, I'm not extremely good at these kind of games because I don't play a lot of them. Um, so I'm basically playing on baby mode at this point moving forward. So I, I, cause I really love the story. The story's great. Uh, but so I just want to experience the story. Then I'll go back through and I'll start ramping up difficulty and, and doing more. Cause I, I tried the hardest difficulty I could cause you can't do the absolute hardest difficulty. I don't think until you can beat the game. That's like that in some other games. I haven't beaten the game yet. So I'm assuming that's when it unlocks, but either way, the difficulty level just below that's already insanely difficult. Um, that's fine. All the difficulty settings are there. Uh, the frame rate itself seems to be a much more steady. Not only did I observe this myself, Digital Foundry confirmed that basically for a vast majority of the game, I would say probably 80% or so, the game basically stays at 29 or 30 FPS, which is a massive improvement over, uh, over what Doom did. Doom had frequent dips down to the low 20s and even occasionally in the teens. I can say that I haven't experienced any dip down into the teens, uh, but obviously when you get into the open city environment, as Digital Foundry pointed out, the game doesn't hit 30 FPS either. It regularly runs between like 22 and 26 FPS. Uh, thankfully, it doesn't seem to dip down into the teens there either, but it just kind of lives in that zone, in that more open area, and uh, with tons of enemies on screen. Like at one point, I had seven, eight, nine enemies on screen, and someone uh, in my live stream yesterday said, oh man, look at that lag, but that was actually just a stream glitch. My game on my end did not lag in that point. It was still uh, a solid 30 FPS is what I'm saying there. So uh, that's great. And my thing is, when, when you look at it in that light, uh, it makes anything seem possible, right? You're talking about a, a current gen, one of the most impressive visually looking current gen games of all time, having no, uh, in terms of uh, visual compromises uh, that are unreasonable, running on switch but then there's you know at 30 fps that makes it seem like everything in the world is possible but there's the other side of the coin and this is where this is where a lot of the people who are going to hate on this port are are going to really hammer home um the game oftentimes drops down to resolutions of 680 540 and even substandard def at 320 yes this happens a lot this happens a lot a lot, a lot. Uh, the 320 res is not as noticeable on handheld because of the shrunk down screen, but you could still tell. Um, as Digital Foundry calls it, it's a very blurry game, and I, I agree. It, it's very, very blurry at many times. Um, and this isn't to say the game is not worth playing on Switch. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be playing this game a ton because I'm having fun. And I have a rant on this coming later, so I don't want to dive too deep into what matters the most in gaming. And I'm not going to say the resolution and frame rates are relevant. But what I am going to say is this also does possibly show the technical limitations of the Switch. And while we've seen resolutions drop below HD before in other games, uh, and other games like Super Mario Odyssey that runs at 60 FPS can't even hit 1080p, I, I feel like... Um, I'm not sure where this game puts things in perspective for me for future AAA games on Switch because a lot of the things they chose not to sacrifice in the game could have gave them more GPU headroom and would have allowed them to have a higher frame rate and or a higher resolution. But they chose not to not to do it. They could have got rid of shadows entirely. Not saying that's ideal, but they could have did that. Um, motion blur is, is completely unavailable to disable and for those who don't know motion blur actually has adds a heavy um, top end cpu tax so if they would get rid of motion blur which some people don't even like motion blur in the first place if they would have got rid of that uh, that alone could have actually saved some some headroom and allowed the game to run at higher resolutions more often um, and little tweaks here and there see the thing is panic button who ported the game chose to try to keep the game as close to the visual presentation as possible possible and uh they did a very very good job and it's really impressive they did so but personally this is why i've been arguing really since fire emblem warriors came out that i wish games would do two different modes basically a 30 fps and a 60 fps mode or in the case of something like wolfenstein 2 where i don't even think 60 fps is even attainable i feel like it should be a visual quality mode versus maybe resolution mode if that makes sense to me right like here, you could try to keep the visual identity as close as possible and deal with lower resolutions and lower frame rates, or you can have a more consistent frame rate and higher resolutions, but get rid of some of the visual elements. In fact, what they should allow you to do, and, and this is just me throwing this out there for anyone who's in the AAA space looking to make games, give people options like you have on PC. 
So here's your baseline options and then allow people to lower those options and toy around things if they want to get the game to run the way that they want it to run. If people don't mind Wolfenstein the way it is now, they can keep it that way. If they want higher resolutions, here's shaders and lighting and other things you could disable to maybe get that resolution bump to be more consistently at 720 and above. But that's just me, right? Like I, I'm not sure what you guys are, are thinking, but that's my thought process here because Wolfenstein 2 is a fantastic game. Whether you're playing on Xbox One X, PC, PlayStation 4, or you're playing it on Switch, it's a good game irregardless of what the resolution hits and what the frame rate hits. Uh, pe different people are going to say that different frame rates are playable. For me growing up, a lot of games were very, very playable at 15 FPS. If Today, that's like unheard of. 15 FPS is just terrible. And frame rate, obviously, I'd rather have it 60. I'd rather have, you know, 4K resolution, let alone 720p and 1080p. But the reality is that I just played Wolfenstein 2 today while I was going to the bathroom. Um, like, just just thinking about that. I took a dog for a walk today, and I played Wolfenstein 2 while I was on a walk. Like, these, these scenarios just weren't even possible a few days ago unless you had a review copy of Wolfenstein 2. So, yeah, I'm, at this point, it's what sacrifices are acceptable to you guys in order to have the convenience of being able to play Wolfenstein 2 and other AAA games anywhere. To me, I am fine with the sacrifices made in this game. Uh, you have been watching footage of this throughout. Hopefully, I have some handheld footage in there as well so you can kind of compare and contrast that. But uh, I, I just think that Wolfenstein 2 is... Just a, a brilliant, a brilliant case study of what's possible on Switch. Why any AAA game can run on Switch, depending on the sacrifices. And if any of you guys out there are just like, look, it looks like crap. Three, three, you know, 320, 360 p, whatever. LOL, LOL, LOL. 30 fps, LOL. That's fine. Like, go play the game on this on the platforms you want. But I think for a lot of people who own Switch, and I can say this safely because of what my fiance said. My fiance, after I got done with the stream last night and, and got done playing it, although I played a little bit on handheld in bed, she's just like, man, this game looks good. See, people that are oblivious to uh, better options out there or have no interest in those options are going to think the Switch version is amazing. So it's one of those things where remember your audience, remember not everybody cares about the same thing that everybody else cares about, and at the end of the day, um, I do think this means we're not going to get a lot of AAA games. I stand by what I said, but it is nice to see that it is possible to have these kind of games. Uh, it's just a matter of if developers are willing to make the sacrifices necessary to get them on Switch in a form that's just not going to be visually impressive. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do, and if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Be sure to let me know what you think about Wolfenstein 2 and other, other AAA games coming to Switch uh, in the comments below. I'll catch you guys in the next one.